Do you want to hear a story of sorrow and pain? Have you ever owned a stock and sold it, only to watch it maybe double or triple in value? Well, I owned a stock that I sold only to watch it go up 15 times in value. So you know how it feels to sell that stock and see it go up one or two times in value. Well, it feels 15 times worse when it goes up 15 times in value. And the stock I'm talking about is Antero Resources. Now, you can go back through my videos. I'm sure it's still out there in Ron's basement. And in February of 2020, I was making videos about Antero Resources. I had thoroughly researched the company, uh, and I had pretty much gone all in on the stock, okay? Um, I had written letters to the CEO, I uh, was very active in the chat rooms, and I knew the company inside and out, and I thought that they had a very good chance of recovering. They're a natural gas company, in a nutshell. Natural gas and oil companies had been obliterated at that point. The price of natural gas was much lower than it is today. Uh, so I, I really made a big investment for me into that stock. Now. Uh, the COVID crisis hit and uh, things got crazy and the stock went up a little bit and you know what I did? I sold it, okay? Um, I got out and then over the course of the last two years, I've had the uh, distinct pleasure, I don't know if you've had this happen, where I got to watch it just multiply and multiply uh, in value. Uh, however, let me say a couple things. Uh, you know, number one, yeah, had you followed me back then and had you invested $10,000, for instance, in Antero Resources when I was banging the table about it, you would have, your 10000 would have grown to about $150,000 today. Uh, but like I've said many times, there there is no crystal ball down here. None of us have crystal balls. And there's something about Antero that I think relates to the gold and silver mining companies today. Okay, the gold and silver mining companies have been beat down, but there's a one big difference. Antero and most of the kind of junior to mid-size oil and gas stocks back then, back then those companies had a ton of debt. Okay, there were two things going on. Number one, they had a ton of debt. Uh, number two, uh, the product that they sell, natural gas and oil, was pretty severely depressed. So with all that debt and with the depressed commodity price, gas and oil, there was a real prospect that those companies could go bankrupt, which explained why they were, you know, like Antero, I had purchased it for around $1.50, $1.60 per share. Um, big difference right now with the silver and gold mining companies. Number one, most of their balance sheets are in excellent shape. The companies that I own, uh, Equinox, Equinox, Fortuna, um, First Mining Gold and Brixton, uh, most of them have very little to almost no debt at all. Equinox has a good chunk of debt, but not anything like from a ratio perspective or anything else like these oil and gas companies had. So, uh, yeah, that's my, that's the, uh, that's the story, you know. I mean, I probably, had I just held on to all that, it would be worth about a million dollars right now. But, it could have gone to zero. And, you know, like I said, when I compare the current situation with the gold and silver mining stocks to the situation that those stocks were in back then, gold and silver mining stocks have very little debt and the price that they're getting paid for gold that they sell and silver that they sell right now is pretty darn good. You know, I mean, gold's hovering around 2000 per ounce. So, um, you know, Another important thing to remember, also around that time frame, or a little earlier than that, I was very, very optimistic about J.C. Penney, believe it or not. I visited a lot of the stores. I dug into that company like you wouldn't believe. This was before COVID. Um, and I did at one point have some a big position in J.C. Penney. Well, when COVID hit, which was right about when they were starting to get traction with their turnaround program that Jill Soltow was heading up, COVID hit and just wiped them out. So, you know, I could have held on to all my JCPenney as well and been to zero. Woulda, coulda, shoulda, right? Now, another lesson out of all this. 
there will always be another opportunity, okay? If you, you know, everybody from time to time sells things too soon. <laughs> um, uh, sometimes we sell them, sell them too soon, sometimes we sell them too late. You know, nobody's perfect, nobody has a crystal ball. Uh, uh, another, so there's always an opportunity, always another opportunity. There will be more opportunities in the future. I, you know, have been through other similar type situations like this, and it's easy for us to think, oh, I'm never gonna, that was it, that was my one shot, is never. Trust me, more opportunities will come up, and if we learn from our past um, experiences, I won't call them mistakes, experiences, uh, we can live to go forward. You know, the money that when I did sell Antero, I put a lot of that money into gold mining stocks uh, in that April time frame of 2020, and many of those did very, very well. They didn't go up 15 times in value, but they still did pretty well, and, you know, we're doing okay. Um, uh, the other idea that I want to share with you guys is, and this is something that I honestly can struggle with from time to time, you got to watch your position size. You know, I can, I can really dive in and get some big positions in companies when I believe in them. And while usually I'm right, sometimes, like with JCPenney, I'm wrong. And if you've got all your money in that and something unexpected and unexpected things do happen both unexpected bad and good but some unexpected bad things do happen you can get wiped out or excuse me experience pretty significant uh, drawdowns um, so I guess that's it uh, you know I, I, I I'm I'm a I want to throw this in as well when it comes to Antero and you know why I seem to be attracted to undervalued stocks it's because at some point in my past, uh, I have some raccoon blood in me because raccoons like to dig around dumpsters looking for treasures. Uh, Jim Rogers, who's a guy I really enjoy listening to, he often says like the key to investing is, you know, buying stuff when nobody wants it. Um, like it's in the corner and it's like nobody wants it, nobody wants to touch it but you believe that there's some conditions that can change in a favorable manner in the future for that particular investment. So uh, I'm still bullish on gold and silver. Um, and like I said, when I compare it, you know, from a, from a, from a risk management perspective, sure, if gold goes to $1,200, that's going to stink, right? Uh, I don't think that's going to happen. If gold stays around 2000 or 1800 or you know, 1900 and silver stays where it is, we're in good shape. Um, so, you know, we'll learn from our mistakes um, and uh, keep moving on. So I hope you enjoyed my story of, uh, of heartbreak with Antero Resources. Apparently, I'm, I'm, uh, today I'm uh, sponsored by Kingsford Charcoal. The sun is shining right in the window perfectly on the Kingsford bag. So maybe they want to sponsor me. Uh, we'll see. Uh, if you like my video, please press the like button. Please subscribe. That helps out a lot. I hope everybody's doing well. Thanks for being in Ron's basement. You're always welcome here, and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.